Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all people of all sexes and ages and genders. And I'm Ken. That's Chris. This is the Geek Pants Media Camcast. We're also very inclusive. That's why Ken said all genders. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care. However you want to define, hey, you if it makes you happy, fuck it. <laughs> Do it. You, I don't care. You be you. If it fills a hole inside you, do it. I don't fucking care. Mm-mm. Anyway. Mm-mm. So, Kenneth. So, Chris. I don't know about you, but yeah. I'm a little apprehensive about doing this camcast. Interesting. Because MCU fan, and I'm going to say boys, because I feel like it is mostly. MCU fan boys are incredibly protective mm. of almost everything that is MCU, with the exception of Captain Marvel and Eternals. And Eternals. And Eternals. I, I think I think there is a more so Captain mutual, Marvel. A mutual anything. agreement there that Eternals is bullshit. <laughs> well, we did a camcast on it. We certainly did. And it was one of the most negative camcasts that we could possibly do. It was tough. It was rough. But we didn't talk about Moon Knight yet. So. No. And the worst part is, is honestly, I feel like the positives for Moon Knight are going to be very similar to the positives in Eternals. Yeah. Okay, so having said that, Moon Knight came out in 2022, created by Jeremy Slater, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. directors, uh, so Mohamed Diab, who did four episodes, Justin Benson did one episode, and Aaron Moorhead did one episode. And usually I love Benson and Moorhead. Yep. Uh, So the cast, we've got... Whew. Mark Spector slash Moon Knight, Stephen Grant slash Mr. Knight, mm-hmm. and Jake Lockley slash another version of Moon Knight, played to perfection by Oscar Isaac. Yes. Okay. I mean, I know that the first couple episodes, people were shitting on his British accent. I. I was like, you know what? I'm glad that he sounds like a different British guy. Why shouldn't he sound actually British when that's just a personality of his? Yeah, or why why does he have to sound like a certain style of British? Like, why does it have to be like the Queen's Queen's British? You know, when there's like Cockney British and then there's Limey British. Like, there's like just like how American or human, like English people like in Canada sound different depending on if they're in Newfoundland. Yep. Or if they're in Ontario, in or if Quebec, they're in the I mean, south, they're in the south of the United States of America. Yeah. You know, but Texans anyway. Texans and Boston people sound completely different. <laughs> yeah, and they hate each other. Yes. Yes, they do. But, but yeah, but I mean, the second that he was cast, I was like, okay, so I have no issues with his portrayal. This is no. going to be great. This is going to be absolutely incredible. I mean... I had developed a man crush on Oscar Isaac within about five minutes of watching uh, Machina. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ex Machina is still my favorite movie. Ever. Ex Machina. Yeah, it is Ex Machina. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, He's fuck. so great in that movie. Oh, but that movie alone. I, oh, I can't that wait movie to do alone. a camcast for this one. That movie alone. Oh, anyway. Uh, we've got La- Leo. Fauli slash Scarlet Scarab, which had I not read articles about this, I wouldn't have known that that's who she was. Yeah. She's played to perfection by May Kalamewe. Mm-hmm. Um, even though the character was whatever. We've got, uh, I'm going to butcher, so just bear with me, guys. Uh, Karame Hakim and F. Murray Abraham, who played Khonshu. 
Arthur Marrow, played by Ethan Hawke. Yep. Uh, who was wasted in this role completely. Majorly. He is a phenomenal actor, mm-hmm. and he did a really good job with what he was given. It was just... As little as it was. You know, like, he was... He made chicken salad out of chicken shit, essentially, is what they say. <laughs> I wouldn't eat that salad, but... That's what he did. Okay. Now we've got. <laughs> it's funny that this was so high up on the casting. Uh, Bobby Kennedy, who uh, was played by N. N. Kajiran, who is a British cop slash follower of Harrow. Khalid Abdallah is Salim, the avatar of Osiris and leader of the Anid Council mm-hmm. or Anid. I can't remember. We've got Gaspard Uliel as Anton Mogart, the antiquities uh, owner and friend of Maeve. We've got Tawarit, goddess of childbirth and fertility, the hippo, guider of souls throughout the day. For some reason, I did not write who voiced her. So, but she was awesome. She was absolutely incredible. One of my favorite on-screen hippos ever. Uh, actually, you know, it's funny. We were griping about the budget, like the shitty CGI in the first couple episodes. Yeah. Well, all the budget went here to her. Yeah. This hippo looks <laughs> phenomenal. It's in great. fact, when yeah. I saw the hippo, I was like, what the fuck? And then I immediately was like, well, that's where the budget went. Right yeah. there. <laughs> uh, then we've got Wendy Spector. Mark's mom, played by Fernanda Andrade. Elias Spector, Mark's dad, played by Ray Lucas. And Amit, Sophia Danu, and Sabu, Saba Mubarek. So Sof- Sophia Danu did the voice. Sabu Mubarek did the motion capture. And when Amit was like the same size as the tower, it mm-hmm. looked incredible. Absolutely looks incredible. So that's another one where I was like, okay. So the budget, you guys were saving the budget for these two characters. Probably could have splurged for a bit more of the uh, Moon Knight fight scenes. But... Yeah. I mean, you know, Disney doesn't really have that much money. No, not at all. They don't No. make money hand over fist over everything now. They don't have almost a complete monopoly over every single media. Or I intellectual property. No, yeah. not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. But I mean, if if this was the case, I would have put more budget into the, the Moon Knight fight scenes. I would have done my best to try and hide the obvious green screen aspects. Because mm-hmm. there was a, a handful of fight scenes where literally I was like, it's in front of a fucking green screen and it's blatantly obvious. Yeah, we discussed um, how bad the fight scenes were in this and how worried we were about Daredevil after this. Um, The only fight scene that I thought was really, really good was in the last episode where you had that side-strolling shot of Mr. Knight Mm -hmm. fighting the bad guys. Yeah. And then switching between Mr. Knight and Moon Knight. That sequence was awesome. But that side-scrolling sequence was the only time where I'm like, okay, so, and I said this to you, I said, if they did it more like that, then A, the fight scenes would have been better, and B, I'd be a little bit more uh, optimistic about Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. Because prior to that, those fight scenes, I was like, ugh. They had literally had fight scenes where there's like three or four guys facing whatever version of uh, <laughs> Mark Spector it was. And they had them come at him one at a time. And I was like, oh, are you kidding? Like at least yeah. two at a time, really give you an idea of how good of a fighter Mark Spector is or, or whatever. But anyway, that's one of the major gripes. My biggest gripe. And you know what guys like, honestly, 
If you liked Moon Knight, good. Like, I'm happy for you. I'm happy you enjoyed Moon Knight. But I, I, by the end of the first episode and by the beginning of the second episode, I immediately, when they kept switching between Stephen Grant. Yeah, you get those blackouts. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, like, he either he wakes up or Mark Spector wakes up and, and then all the stuff is happening and they kept doing it. Like, at first I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. That's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. But then, like I said, by the beginning of the second episode, I was like, oh, okay. And it goes like that right to the end. All right. Like, yeah. it, right up until the fourth episode when they did that that classic Disney Marvel fourth episode. That's the one that sells the... No, sell me in the first fucking episode. Sell me in the first episode, string me along, and then hit me with something mid mid season, I guess you could say. Yeah. You know? Don't or at least tell me. Tell me it's gonna take four episodes to build. But by the end of that fourth episode, I'm gonna be like, holy shit. But then also tell me that you have more than six episodes. Mm -hmm. Because if your fourth episode is the one that knocks my socks off, but there's only two episodes left. Okay. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Um, man, it's just, I, it's honestly, it's been so long that I, I'm almost just at a loss to where to begin. Like, yeah. Okay. Fight scenes largely. Actually, you know what? I'll start like this. Part of the problem with Moon Knight for me was that I got it in my head and I'm trying to remember how this happened, but I'm almost certain that I just kind of put it in my head that based on the things that they were saying about Moon Knight, they were saying like, it's going to be brutal. It's not going to be like every other one. I heard that and I thought, okay, this is, so I got to watch this because this is how, this will give me an idea of how they're going to do Daredevil. Mm -hmm. This is literally going to be how I get in and say, oh, this is why. Because when they first announced Moon Knight five, six years ago, they had actually said that this was going to be like Daredevil. They were yeah. like, if you like Daredevil, you're going to love Moon Knight. And I was like, oh, okay, because Moon Knight's street level. Yeah, there's some mysticism because of Khonshu, but it's essentially street level. So yeah, okay, all right. So yeah, so I went in there thinking, all right, this is going to give me the idea. This is going to give me the tone. And by the end of the first episode, I was like, uh, this is if this is how they're going to do Daredevil. Like, I don't want to see Daredevil CGI. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see is, Daredevil CGI at all. This is a hard cam cast for me because I don't have a lot of positive at all. My positives right now? cast yeah and uh I, like i said the toilet and amit looked incredible Conchu looked incredible but he was awful but he was terrible it was like watching a transformer or, or venom a character from venom like i i don't understand like this is getting rave reviews rave reviews from the mcu fans out there and these are the same people that rip Venom apart. And I just, I don't fucking understand it. Like, how can you watch this and think it's masterful? Exactly. When it's not. It's full of shoddy CGI. Full of it. It, it spans maybe 90% of the time away from any Moon Knight footage at all. Like, episode four, he's not in it at all. Episode five, is in it for about 10 seconds in a flashback. For me, the worst part about all of this yeah. is that... It was fucking boring. It's horribly boring. I suffered getting to the end of it. I'm telling you, like, it was hard, hard to get to the end of it. And I thought, I thought, like, there's certain characters that have never really connected with me in the comics, right? So, like, Captain Marvel was yeah. one of them. So, but I enjoyed her movie, right? Shane yeah, Chi's another I thought it was one. Great. Shane, the Shane Chi movie is fucking incredible. So good. Eternals, I don't connect to them. Exactly. Didn't care for the movie. So I was like, all right, I don't really connect to Moon Knight. I've always thought he's visually awesome, but I have never been able to really get into his stories. I just, I can't. Uh, well, 
I, for me, I'm a little bit different because like that Warren Ellis run, I, and I, I've been telling you, I, I was like, man, like, yeah. Yeah. The introduction of Mr. Knight. Yeah. It, or not, not even that, but it was, it was also the, the concept that he, it was, yeah. Okay. He was, but he, he wasn't called Mr. Knight in that run. He was just moon Knight. He just picked a basic, like based on the phases of the moon would dictate the version of moon Knight that you were going to get. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So okay. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. It wasn't tied to each, uh, 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 each identity. It wasn't tied to each identity. So it wasn't like Stephen Grant got M- Mr. Knight, you know, and then Loxley got armored up Moon Knight. You know, it, yeah. it wasn't anything like that at all. Well, because it, was it wasn't mystical. The costume wasn't mystical in the comics. No, uh, this one I would no no it wasn't no because like he actually he was he was like Batman like he made his yeah. own costume and stuff like that he yeah. just really he was the only real mysticism was that anytime he died Conchu would bring him back yeah you know um, and I know like Jeff Lemire's run started to delve into the mystical stuff but also in Warren Ellis's run they do dive into mystical shit but it's like it's like a dirty dark supernatural stuff like. Like it's it's kind of it's hard to describe. Now I didn't think they were going to go this route, but I thought okay, like that would be a run to kind of mine from, kind of take parts from. And I thought that's what yep. they were doing when I saw the two different versions of the suit. Because I even said that. I was like, oh my god, yeah, this is going to be great, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, okay. I'll, so one division is currently the longest episodic season of the entire MCU TV line, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for them, that fourth episode was really the part where it started to pick up for a lot of people. Now, I was already invested leading up to the fourth one. I know you were saying- Me too. No, I was, but it was the fourth one where they really flipped the table and I went, holy fuck. Right, and I agree. I was in that part too, but like I was- I was in and I was like, okay, oh yeah, we, we're starting to see some shit. And then they, they flipped it and then it was like, oh fuck. And they kept going. And even though the ending, and I like that they referenced that in uh, Doctor Strange 2. Because, you know, we talked about this too, like the, at the end of WandaVision, you know, everyone's looking at her like she's the bad guy. And it's like, well, because she is. Yeah. She was the bad guy. You know, <laughs> like, yes, Agatha is the like bad guy like she's worse than you know she just wants power for the sake of having power whereas like you know obviously it's trauma that led uh wanda to this but she isn't good she held yeah. these, she like held these people against their will made them do shit they were aware of it it's like that's the worst part too is they, they were aware of it mm. you know so she's not a good person but like this one, I was bored to tears every single episode. And yeah, the fourth episode, you know, when they do the switch and he dies and wakes up in the insane asylum, I was like, oh, okay. And then episode five, I was right back to being fucking bored out of my mind. Yeah, I was just like, oh, plus it wasn't like, at no point in time was I just like, ah, geez, I don't know how this is going to go. I was like, well, clearly he's dead. And then the, like, he, this is all in his brain and this is how his brain is interacting. And eventually he's going to be brought back to life because they're going to like somehow Conchu is going to get uh, released and then bring it back to life. And then by that point, we're at the sixth episode and that's going to be the end. Mm-hmm. You know, I honestly didn't think we were going to see a giant kai- kaiju battle between Amit and Conchu. That totally reminded me of Power Rangers. <laughs> 100% was a Power Rangers <laughs> fucking move right there. And I yeah. mean, like, sure, you know, you had the ground fights. And like I said, that one side scrolling, that one single solitary side scrolling sequence, I was like, okay, all right. But the rest of it was just, I, like, honestly, I, I would like, I challenge 
one of the any one of these MCU fanboys. Like I know that like we don't get any real comments or anything like that for the most part, but I challenge them to actually explain to me why this is so good. What like aside from the acting, take the acting out of the equation because if the acting wasn't as good, then how the fuck is this perfect? Like tell me how this is perfect. Like, yeah. Even, even the fanboys with Eternals, like Eternals is probably the one where the fanboys don't shit on, or don't praise it the most. It's not as shit on as Captain Marvel, but then again, that's a female led movie. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Right. And of course, Brie Larson isn't the stereotypical uh, incel version of the perfect woman. So naturally, they, you know, fuck her too. Right. So. But Eternals didn't get shit on by them nearly as much as Captain Marvel. And I'll tell you right now, Captain Marvel's a better movie. Yeah. Period. Easily. You know? And Easily I, and a better I wasn't film. exactly like glowing praise with our campcast. I wasn't you know, like, oh, it's the greatest fucking movie, you know? I think I actually did say, like, honestly, I'm surprised it made a billion considering Wonder Woman was better. Yep. Across the board, it's a better movie. Yeah. And it should have done a billion, but it didn't. But anyway, but I'd like them to tell me how, how is it so good? Like, sure, the representation of disassociative identity disorder, from what I understand, is actually really well done, you know? And the acting, like I said, is great. The representation of Egypt and Egyptian characters. No complaints. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've said, I want more, I want inclusion. I want like every single representation because I love comic books. I love comic books so much that I want to be able to have like reading comic books with my kids and and, like go to the comic store and and say, hey, you know, what do you want to grab? That's what I want. Like I want that to still be a viable medium. And the only way we're going to get that is if we include everybody so i don't care if you're black you're half black half uh latino like miles morales i don't give i mean i I don't want to be flippant i just mean i want comic books for everyone i want anybody to look at a comic book and go hey this reminds me of me or yeah oh this person's trans i i didn't know there was trans superheroes because almost never they're almost always bad guys but you know just something that sits there and goes oh my god i i i'm gonna read this because this speaks to me you know and and maybe that's what makes that person say i want to be the best version of myself i mean i keep going back to comic books you know and that kind of medium because it makes me want to be the best version of myself like and anytime i start to get into that dark uh depression like that everyone goes through I have to sit there and go, no, 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 you've got to start looking and reading your comic books again because you have to sit there and get out of that bunk because this isn't you. Yeah. You're the guy that tells people, I, you know, like, what would Superman do instead of what would Jesus, what would Superman do? He would do the right thing. Why would he do it? Be- because it's the right thing, you know? Yeah. He doesn't save people's lives because, uh, you know, certain people of political affiliations will go, Oh, he's our hero, you know, or he doesn't sit there and and only save certain types of people. He doesn't give a fuck who you are. He will help bad guys. He will stop bad guys, but then he'll say to those bad guys, there's another way. I will help you. I'll do whatever I can to help you. You know, Spider-Man's another example of that type of character. Hell, even Batman, when he's done properly, there's been plenty of times. In fact, Batman the Animated Series, that guy stopped those villains, but also was like, there's another way. I can help you. You know? That's why Batman doesn't kill. It's not because he, you know, that's, what is it? What's the line? When you kill a killer, there's still one killer in the world. That's not why he doesn't kill. He doesn't use guns because his parents were killed by a gun, but he doesn't kill because he doesn't believe that they can't be helped. That's why. But tell me, tell me, like, tell me 
what's redeeming? Like, what is uplifting? What is empowering? What is so good about this show? Can you, how can you tell me that this was a well-written six episode show, but then tell me that Hawkeye was garbage in comparison? Yeah. I, I, I want to know. I don't know, can man. I, I can't, uh, I'm hearing so many good things about Ms. Marvel. And it's to the point now where it's like, I don't know if I could trust anyone anymore with Marvel shows. I think Ms. Marvel is going to be good. And I hope it is because I need a palate cleanser from this bullshit. Exactly. But how can I trust anyone about Marvel movies anymore? If Marvel yeah. Studios was stamped above Morbius, it would have a 90% on fucking Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> So would Venom, and so would Venom Left There Be Carnage. Every yeah. single one of these movies, yeah, people would be like, oh, it's the greatest. Yeah. But because I mean, there's Sony version of these. Now, to be fair, Morbius isn't, you know, a great movie. No. But Morbius It's also is, not a bad movie. I was going to say, Morbius is better than this, in my opinion. I agree. It's not even a well-written movie, but I feel like it's better written than this. You know, the only real positives to this show is, like I said, the inclusion of Egypt and just Egyptian culture in general, because we don't see enough of it. And it was one of those things where I'm like, it's hilarious how that's actually in threaded, like deeply in threaded in Moon Knight. And they almost they've never really touched upon it. Until I think in recent comic books and in this show. So that's awesome. Hats yeah. off to you for that. The representation, like I said, my understanding of the disassociative identity disorder is supposed to be like bang on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know what? Great. That's awesome. And the character work that Oscar Isaac does, and a lot of these actors do, is really good. Okay, great. But tell me that, explain to me how Harrow is supposed to be a really good villain just because you saw him put sandals uh, on his feet with glass in them and then spoke in a whisper. <laughs> yeah, it was a waste for Ethan Hawke. Holy fuck, was that a waste? Ethan Hawke said in an interview that he had based his portrayal of Arthur Harrow off of Vincent D'Onofrio's Wilson Fisk. I don't see it. I don't see it at all. I don't know, buddy. All I know is that this show is so bad that A, Oscar Isaac has no more booked Moon Knight appearances in the MCU. And B, my favorite, my favorite the B, before, fucking Power Rangers are fighting. And, and again, yeah. like Eternals, no one in the MCU is paying attention to this. <laughs> I actually read somewhere that like there were people that were saying it was refreshing that Moon Knight doesn't reference anything in the greater MCU at all. And it's in its own little pocket. And I was like, okay, that's an interesting take. Yeah. But again, like you said, and like I've said in Eternals, it's mm -hmm. becoming one of those things where it's just like, like at least in Eternals, they reference the greater MCU. Yes, yes. The problem comes when, you know, a giant fucking celestial is birthed in the Earth itself and none of the people show up. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, yeah, I know you could argue that, like, Thor, the Guardians, Captain Marvel, all off-world. Okay. War Machine. <laughs> right yeah vision dismantled okay we don't know where white vision is okay fine war mm -hmm. machine you know still is around yep we know hulk is still around mm -hmm. sure his arm is fucked for the rest of his life but we know he's still around we know that because he's also going to be in she hulk yep uh, yeah okay but okay fine all right we don't reference them at all but again this is another thing where now you have another super group of people who are avatars and those people can like if if the triad of people that's inside mark specter
can do half the shit that he can do as any version of Moon Knight. Why didn't they help out with anything? Yeah. Like, so, okay, fine, whatever. Let's never reference anything. For, and we'll go, okay, fine, that's refreshing. Okay, great, fine. It's in its own little pocket that doesn't touch anything other than that little version. Okay, but still, tell me how Arthur Harrow is a good villain. And how come, and how come he didn't have his own avatar suit like Mark Spector did, but they had to have, so he couldn't fight Mark Spector in his own suit with his cane or whatever mm-hmm. while the two giant fucking mechazords are fighting each other. You know, and yeah, getting back to the Venom, well, first episode, my thought process was, okay, so now everybody just does Venom jokes? You know, like... Wait, Kanchu can't, you, just- can't you visually... When he's stalking Mark through the hallways and everything, or Steven, it was horrifying. And then he it talks. Awesome. And then he talks. And you're like, You sound like that like could have been a joke. That could have been straight up horror, you know? Like it should have been. It should have been a little bit on the scary side. Yeah. Because I mean, if you don't know anything about, you know, uh Moon Knight, then yeah, this weird skeletal bird thing haunt like stalking you should be scary should be horrifying and then yeah he is like this jokey like seth mcfarland voice and you're like okay all right <laughs> this know, is but, hands down but hold least... on i wanted to say this when you were getting to your a and b's and stuff my favorite yeah, part yeah. is about a because like it's a one season but even before the season was over they were saying Oscar Isaac has not signed for anything other than these six episodes. So these six episodes is the only time you're ever going to see Moon Knight unless he renegotiates. Signs on or they recast him. Like, I don't know. It just, it seems horribly pointless. It's incredibly pointless. And it's the wrong way to do it. I don't. Right off the bat, I had a bad feeling with this because I didn't like the mystical suit. I didn't like it at all. The, oh, mu- the, mum- the mummy look. The second that I saw that, you and I both talked about it, and it was yeah. like, it looks horrible. Yeah. That's not the way I would have done the Moon Knight suit. No, not even close. But okay, they did it. And uh, I mean, uh, it was kind of cool. Like seeing it wrap around him, I thought that was kind of cool, but it was still just like, yeah, but you look like a mummy with a fucking cape. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Okay, and and you know what? Like, this is one of those. Like, this is entirely subjective, right? So uh, for everybody that loved the suit, good. I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you love the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's fucking ease up though, because yeah, it's not good. <laughs> And I'm saying this as a guy that like freely admits that like Venom and Let There Be Carnage aren't like perfect movies. Like they're not masterpiece movies. And Morbius too. I'll I'll loop all the Sony Spider-Man adjacent universe movies in there. Yeah. None of them are perfect movies. Okay. But I would watch actually of the three, I would say. I would have to say Let There Be Carnage is probably my least favorite of the three. And even then, I would rewatch that one in a heartbeat over this show. If someone said, hey, Chris, you have a choice. Venom 2 or, yeah, Venom 2 or Moon Knight. Which one? All day long, I'm taking Venom 2. Yeah. All day long. You know why? Because they're fun. This is six hours of pure boredom. Yeah, well, and that's the other thing. Like, for for all this sh- the negativity that I had for Venom 2, you know, mm-hmm. and there was quite a bit that I was just like, oh, yeah. Fuck oh, off. yeah. Like, yep. And there was like, and I was picking apart the story too, you know, like I was literally saying, like, what nobody's talking about these used up husks of humans that the, the symbiote is, is taking over. Mm-hmm. No one's saying, hey, we noticed a huh, large part of like in the area of Eddie Brock's house, 
husks of people just being used up. They actually just kind of showed it so that Venom could meet up with the Asian store owner so that he could go back to, or Venom, yeah, so he could go back into Eddie. They yep. actually almost played it for laughs. And yet, I wanted to watch the end of the movie. I wanted to continue watching. At no point did I feel like I just have to get through this episode or the next 20 minutes and then I can watch the credits. I got to the fourth episode and they did the whole thing and I was like, okay. But then within minutes of the fifth, I was like, ah, fuck me. Are you kidding? I have an immense amount of fun doing these cam casts, whether it's a Zoom cast or it's in person mm-hmm. or at some point live or open, possibly 2023. But rarely does it feel like work and that's kind of what it is because you know we're talking about stuff that largely we like you know yep so it's it's like yeah fucking rights but then when we get into situations like and i'll i'll say eternals even with eternals i still was like where are they going to go with this i wanted to see the end yeah when i got to the climax of the film i was like i mean okay all right like it's visually looked cool like there's nothing wrong with it visually it was, and like i said before it was well acted and it's not like the writing was god awful by any means mm-hmm. and yes i was probably the most bored with this movie than any mcu movie ever period okay period <laughs> oh easy across, across the fucking board but nothing pales in comparison to the painful boredom this show gave me yeah this is hands down hands down at the bottom of the mcu pool for me i hope i never ever watch this show again and honestly i mean (laughs) phase four has taught me one thing it's taught me that i have zero interest in seeing everything marvel does going forward i i just i at this point I'm watching a lot of it for a camcast. I would have watched one or two episodes of Moon Knight and probably stopped, but I finished I, it uh, so we could do a camcast. I'll tell you right now. I don't know how many of the camcasts I want to devote to the MCU TV shows moving forward because of this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm in the same boat as you. I've heard nothing but rave reviews from Ms. Marvel. Okay. But this show tainted me. Oh, it horribly tainted me. Because I'm I'm in that same boat with you where, first of all, I want the show to be good. Okay. I wanted Moon Knight to be good, just to clarify. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge Moon Knight fan. I'll tell you that right now. But I'm also not a huge Captain Marvel fan. Yeah. Or a Shazam fan. Yeah. Or a Shang-Chi fan. Okay. I know who Shang-Chi is. I have a general, I know that the story that his origin that we got in like the movie is not the same in the book. Yeah. Okay. Shang-Chi is one of the best Marvel movies I've seen in a long time. Oh, easily. You know, um, but like, I, I just, uh, I just, I will watch Miss Marvel. It, yeah, I think but I'm saying right now, I don't know that I am going to watch Miss Marvel for the purposes of doing a cam cast just yet. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's exactly the same feeling I have for She Hulk, even though She Hulk is going to be longer in, in episodes. Okay. Yeah. There's also the rumored tease of Matt Murdock. Or possibly Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's going to be more of like a fun comedy type sort of take. Yeah. Not a a fun sort of take on the character because it's nothing new. John Byrne's run on Sensational She-Hulk. She was breaking the fourth wall. Oh, yeah. It was was a fun romp. Dan Slott's run. Dan Slott's run was hilarious. You know, like the character itself strangely enough lends itself to that style really well yeah like she was breaking the fourth wall before 
Deadpool was even created. Yeah. Let that sink in, Geek Panthers. Yeah. Before Deadpool was created, and keep in mind when he was created, he wasn't breaking the fourth wall either. But before no. that character was created, she was doing that shit. Yeah. So, but this show has fucked me because I'm like, uh, I mean, so yeah, so I, I will watch Ms. Marvel. And I will see how I feel about it. And then depending on that and depending on your feelings on it, then we might talk about it. But I don't I, I, I say don't we just go show by show going forward. So yeah, no more guarantees. I mean, yeah, we already skipped what if, but what if it was its own little anthology thing? I don't really count that as even though it is Marvel Studios, I don't count it as part of the whole. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't even I was like, yeah, it's what if. So like unless it's adding and building towards the phase. Yeah. Then I, I, you know, and that's, and that's the other part too is prior to this phase, everything was building towards Thanos. Yeah. Okay. What are we building towards now? I only feel like, honestly, with Doctor Strange 2 is the only clear cut feeling of we're building towards something Mm -hmm. like, yeah, Loki, you know, introduced Kang and, and everyone was saying like Kang is going to be the next big bad. But if he is, then how come we haven't heard of him since Loki? Well, he's going to be an Ant-Man. Oh, he's going to be an Ant-Man. Great. But... But, But hold on. We got Thanos teased when at the very end of Avengers one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then almost every movie after that referenced Thanos or the stones in some way, shape or form with the exception of Ant-Man and uh, Ant-Man two and guardians two. Yeah. And Civil War. Yeah. Civil War. But the Civil cat, War. The cat movies didn't touch on it. Civil War. Uh, or no, no. Cap One touched on it because that was the. the but the Winter test Soldier rack. didn't. Winter Soldier didn't. Uh, but I would argue that those stories, both those two, Civil War and Winter Soldier, still had lasting effects. They changed the landscape. Right. Of everything. So that. You still had you were still working towards something. Mm-hmm. By the end of Civil War, you were like, okay, well, how is Infinity War going to happen now that there's this schism? Yeah, like it was still pushing things forward. Okay, I mean, again, so I'll say Doctor Strange. Well, now we've got ties to Wandavision. Yep. Check. Okay. Perfect. All right. But at the end of Doctor Strange 2, I still feel like we're moving towards something. Something. I don't think it's Kang anymore. I think Kang is, like I said, going to be the Loki to you know... Whatever else is coming. Galactus is my big hope. Oh, Galactus is coming. We'll see. He'll he'll come after... I'll even take Doctor Doom. See, I think Doom should be the big bad guy right now. And then I if think you introduce to... Dr. Doom as like a Avengers level threat. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm mm-hmm. actually absolutely fine with that. Yeah. You know, and then, but regardless, regardless. Um, I got to say that after Moon Knight, I'm pretty bummed out that John Watts left Fantastic Four and has been replaced by this guy. Wait, what? The creator of Moon Knight is the one that's doing the Fantastic Four movie. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and that I was bummed out by John Watts leaving Fantastic Four because I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like that I the second he was signed on as that, I was like, oh fuck, that that's gonna be great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you've got the like this is a director that can handle comedy. But also inject heart. Yep. But also inject stakes. 
okay? And I always, and I, and I said this to you, and I, I love how each one of his movies, his Spider-Man movies, it's almost like it's a jokey, whimsical version of the character until about towards the end of the movie. And then, boom, you find out Liz's dad is a vulture. Yeah. Boom, you find out, well, we knew, but like, you know, he fucks up and gives Quentin absolute power. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, the uh, the the villains he's trying to help turn on him. Aunt May dies. You know, it's like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's not going to be a fucking uh, edgy reboot mess like Fan Fantastic, but it's also not going to be almost too lighthearted. Like yeah. the uh, is it John Singer? Who did the no, Tim. Uh, Tim Sale? Yeah, Tim Sale. Who did the first two, which you know are are fine Tim movies. Sale? No, Tim, Tim something. Tim. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's not Tim Sale. Tim Sale. Sale. It's not Tim Sale. We were just talking yeah. about Tim Sale. It's Tim. Yeah. Tim something. Tim Whatever. something. Tim Singer. No. Anyway, <laughs> regardless. Singer. Regardless, so I was like, I was pumped. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? The dra- the Fantastic Four movie is going to be awesome. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Yeah. And uh, then he dropped out. I didn't really follow up after that, so I didn't know that this guy was signed on for it, but. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Ugh. Like, unless, unless we get better writers, I. Uh, it's that's very disappointing, and I'm not a, I'm not a huge Fantastic Four fan at all. No, I, not I mean, I'm not it either. But but at the same time, I want this. I want a Fantastic Four movie, and I want it to be good. I want to be able, like, I like all the characters. I just mm-hmm. never really got into the book so much because, I mean, it just wasn't for me. It never spoke to me in the way that Spider Man or X Men or Batman did, and no. that's that's okay. It just wasn't meant for me, but yeah. I love the concept and I'd love to see these characters in these movies, you know? Yeah. But that's it. I, I don't really, I don't have anything else to say. I don't really want to talk about. Oh anything. yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm done. Unfortunately, yeah. I just, uh, like Chris said, if you liked it, good for you. I, it's yeah. 100% not for me though. That's for sure. <laughs> it's the same thing I've been saying since the beginning of this camp cast. If it touches that, like if it presses that button that makes you feel good, great. Press that button all you want. I love it, but it's not for me. And uh, and again, even though I wasn't a huge Moon Knight fan, I wasn't looking at this like, I'm going to fucking hate this. I was like, I yeah. think this is going to be good. I think yeah. this is going to be nice. This is a fucking, and I, and I, you know, it was like, you've got your, High concept bonkers one division. You've got your grounded the uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. High concept Loki, grounded Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Although you had the what if in between, but regardless, you know. And then you got your high concept bonkers Moon Knight, and then grounded Miss Marvel with a little bit of bonkersness. But I, you know what? I, I, I fuck it, <laughs> fuck it, fuck it. <laughs> if you. <laughs> You love it. Good for you. Great. I'm happy for you. But yeah. that's it. I'm done. I'm Chris. I was going to say Kenneth Levitsky. You are Chris. I'm Mercier. Chris Mercier. Yeah. Yeah. This has been the Geek and together Camps we are Moon Knight <laughs> Camcast. <laughs> you know, the drill. You can see us on YouTube. You can see us on Facebook. You can see us on Twitter. You can see us on Instagram. You can see us on geekpantsmedia.com. And you can hear us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and on SoundCloud, and you can like, subscribe, and share. Do all that fun shit that we don't say all the time, but every single YouTuber says it. Do all those things. But yeah. I implore you, please, sell me on Moon Knight. Tell me why this is the greatest thing that MCU has ever done, period. Just tell me. Sell it to me. Because I want a better appreciation of this. Because the character is fucking cool. When done right, it's fucking cool. When it's done like Bendis, it's not fucking cool. But (laughs) 
And I don't want to shit on Bendis too much, but that was a horrible concept. I didn't even read the book. And it's a shame because that's the team that brought to life one of the best runs of Daredevil, period. Yeah, yeah. So I was immediately like, holy shit, this is going to be. And then I saw that picture and I was like, fucking garbage. So no thanks. No thanks. Garbage. And it was. (laughs) Don't sell it to me, but uh, that's it. I'm done. Fuck this. I'm done. (laughs) This is out. I'm out. Cut.